Right, good evening. Um, let me check the mic. Yeah, mic is okay. Uh, so I'm going to try to get rid of a nasty bug in this Harlequin board. I just uh, assembled it. That didn't, didn't took too long. Uh, I've done some assembly videos of these Harlequin boards and it takes about one and a half hour if you do, uh, do more than one. Um, then uh, you get the hang of it. <coughs> but this one uh, actually has a problem. It has a short on 5 volt. Um, some kind of short because I cannot measure it with my multimeter. Um, so we have to find out what it is and how to solve it. Uh, let me share the stream so more people know that we're in here. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, yep, this is the URL. Then we're going to dig into it. So just two secs, please. Uh, yep. Right. Okay, I think uh, oh, well, one, one uh, Facebook group then. <laughs> Let's do some spamming again, as always. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry in advance. Right. <coughs> so. Um, all right. So let's see if we can find out what is wrong with this board. Uh, I didn't check the cams. So I, I did connect them, so uh, woo, it works, finally. Uh, thanks. All right, so hey, Stuart, good evening. Um, so let me show you what, uh, what, is, what it's doing and what not. Uh, so first, oh, well, let's, uh, let's uh, show what it's doing on the, on the, um, on the other side, on the, the side where I'll test all my stuff. Right, um, that camera isn't positioning us very well. So let's do a small, yeah, that's better. So you can see actually what's, what is happening. Now, I just took off the um, composite video encoder, so we won't get any video output here. But what I want to know is uh, if the die card will show up five volts or not. And it shouldn't because it, it didn't uh, show up uh, five volts an hour ago, so it still should not. And it's only outputting nine volts. I also measured it, it's, the five volts is not present. <coughs> so there seems to be some kind of short, uh, we do have 9 volts, we don't have anything else. Uh, let's just make sure that there's nothing wrong with this diet card, and I know it's an older, older version, that's because I sold all my other, one, other ones and I'm waiting for uh, new ones from China, but they haven't arrived yet. So you can see it's, there's no problem with this diet card, uh, all the voltages are showing up when uh, on our motherboard, so that's not the issue. <coughs> just making sure. Okay, let's get back to the... Oh, yeah, by the way, you can see all the parts here. I'm not sure. No, I can't because it's not on the camera. So let me show you here. All the parts from this um, Harlequin kit are actually on the table here. I already uh, got them off the board because maybe one of the parts was fading. Uh, but that's not the case. And I'm happy of that because uh, all these parts um, are... Uh, are uh, they are from uh, Abrand suppliers, or Farnell or something else, most are. <coughs> or, I, or, I, or I order them in China, but then I test all of them. Uh, so I actually have lots of parts to test, and that's the reason that I actually wanted to get this Harlequin board done. Because here, this, this, this stuff here, all the drawers are uh, parts to test. So that's what I wanted to, use to build this Harlequin kit for, um, to test, for example, new Z80 CPUs. We've got a lot of them here. Um, so I need to test those, I need to test HE11s, um, let me check, 8724s, um, and TL712s, and oh, of course uh, 628, 128 SRAM chips, so the, these ones. So I got lots of parts to test, and I can only do it on this Harlequin board because all those, most of those parts are Harlequin 128 specific. And I didn't have one anymore, so I wanted to build one. But it's not working, so let's get back to the side again. So we're back here, and you, you just noticed that there wasn't any 5 volts, the dark uh, card didn't show up any 5 volts. Um, of course, the first thing that you do is check out if there's any short, so you put it on uh, um, continuing continuation mode, I'm not, not sure what the best word is. Uh, so I'm just measuring ground to ground, that should beep, but there should no, there should, shouldn't be any connection between ground and, for example, 5 volt output, or ground and 9 volt. So nothing between those. So there's no static short. I even uh, did a check on uh, what the actual um, 
resistance impedance is on those lines. So let me check uh, 9 volts to ground. Nothing. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Should measure something. So it's in a mega ohms, 7 mega ohms, and it's uh, fluctuating a bit. That's because it's the input of the uh, 5 volt regulator. And on the 5 volt line, we should get uh, quite a high number because there are no chips on the board. And you can see the number is fluctuating as well, but it's uh, in the tenth of kilo ohms. It's uh, changing a bit. It's probably because we're charging capacitor, which are actually on this side, you can see it here. Um, so nothing there, not yet. <laughs> okay, so as always, when you have uh, things like this, this, that's what you do first, check for shorts. Uh, just buy one of these for 18 euros, something like that, and on AliExpress, uh, probably eBay as well nowadays. Those are cheap, and they, they're th these are good stuff. These are uh, good, cheap multimeters. Uh, but I didn't find any shorts yet, so um, I took my magnifier glass and checked all my soldering connections, and I found it, at least one short here, so I removed it already. Uh, but still no success, so I'm still looking for the problem here. Uh, and I haven't found it, so um, I still don't know what it is, uh, so that's why I got the AD724 off. I could also get this um, HC174 from the board as well, because um, there could still be a problem with that chip. And there, there cannot be any problem with this, because this, this are, is just a... A times a 470 ohm resistance. So let me check. This should be 470. I think you can see it on the yeah, you can see it on the camera. That's good. So there's another one. So these are just uh, eight resistors, nothing special. This, so maybe only this uh, chip is still bad, uh, but I'm I don't think that's the case. Um, and I al uh, already also uh, replaced the voltage regulator. I uh, tested this one. Uh, from the board separately, it was fine. And I also used a Traco power regulator to check out if uh, the regulator might be uh, bad or something, but that wasn't the case. So uh, when I put on the trigger power regulator, we still didn't get five volts. Uh, so what is wrong here? I have absolutely no idea. So this is the five volt line. There's no short here. Let me, oh, 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 let me check. No, this is just the uh, resistance we measured uh, the other way as well, so there, there's no short here. As far as I know, let me check again. Nothing there. And uh, we could just measure 5 volt from one of the pins on the on the chips, because they all, all have 5 volt in the top right corner. So there's no short to any signal on the edge connector. Uh, those are of course not all the signals, present on the board, but that's what we can check. So still no luck. Um, so what should I do? Should I get the chip out? Maybe that would be better because the other solution I have in mind uh, is more, will take more time. So let's do ju ju just that. So let's start with that. We'll take a second to warm up the uh, soldering iron, of course. Um, my second um, thing to, cho to do is I just printed this I know it's faint, but it's on purpose. This um, board layout of the Harkin 128, and it's a uh, faint on purpose because I can draw lines where the 5 volt lines are. And what I want to do is uh, find out the connections between the 5 volt lines on this board. So, for example, uh, this is the top view, by the way, so you only see the tracks on the top, top side of the board. Um, so, here is the 5 volt, for example. So, this line goes there, goes there, it's easy to see, goes here, goes there goes there, goes there, and then it will most probably be connected on the, on the bottom. I uh, don't know why, by the way, because there's space here, so I have to check for that. But here it goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on. And what you can see, you can see a net here. So you see one of the um, branches of the, the main 5-volt power line, and the question is, for example, why is there another connection between there? That's probably because it's on the back. So I'm just checking. Let me check. Uh, so it's connected to this pin, I think. Yeah, this pin. There's nothing there. It's odd. It seems to end there, which is quite odd. Didn't expect that. 
I have another board here to be able to see where everything is going. Check. Okay, so here it stops. But why doesn't it go on to the other side? Maybe because it's routed from the outside of the board, so maybe the lines are connected this these sides here. I, I don't I don't know, we have to check. Um so let, let's do check actually. Um so I see the line going up here on the back. So it's actually let me put it off. It's actually um, going from from the back here, so maybe I can use another color, but I don't have that many colors here. <laughs> Let's use a pencil, so you can see some of the difference. So it's going to the back, it's going uh, through these two lines here, and then it goes to third pin, third pin, let me check. Uh, is that the third pin there? Uh, I think this one here. Seems this bin, let me check. Yeah, that's it. And from there it also goes to that pin and then to that pin here. Yeah. Up. This is different. This is strange. Okay. This should be the same layout, but it's not. <laughs> so I can see there's a difference here. So this J17 is called J16 here. So this is not ex ex exactly the same, and I hate that. <laughs> oh, um, so the board layout is not exactly the correct version, it seems. That's a pity. Anyway. Um, so we cannot use this for a complete certainty, but um, I'm going to stick it on the, on the table anyway because it's a guide, it will help us, but it's, a, it's kind of a pity, so <laughs> I really uh, thought this, this was a correct board, uh, board layer, but anyway. Um, right, okay, so it goes to the pin here and then it stops, nothing more. So where does it come from then? <laughs> Um, so I'm checking if I can find which track goes to 5 volts on the input of the board, and I haven't found it yet. So what I also can see is that when it uh, when it's converted from 9 to 5 volts, it's going to this line here. It's quite easy to, to see, of course, and it's the same on the board. I already saw, uh, saw it. So this is uh, this is not changed. Oh, but it was it was not a line. It's now all right. So we go to this pin here and up there to the capacitor and then to the chip. So there should be some line do going down here to the other nets on the board and of course to these parts as well and I wonder which that could be because I want to cut one of the lines so I can it, uh, create two nets instead of one and check where the fault is so if I cut away part of the 5 volt and the board is um, getting 5 volts again then I know it's uh, on that side of the board for example you know so that's uh, to rule out um, pieces of the board that's, that's what I want to find out so I want to check now where the 5 volt goes down uh, and also of course we still will get out the uh, this chip first but just doing this in between because solder and iron was not budget. So let's get back to the chip first, let's solder it up and see if that makes any change. I really don't expect it but we have to check, we have to try, we have to find out if that is the cause or not. And if it's the cause then we're done, <laughs> but I don't think so. These chips never die. I've never had one failing before of these. So. Just kind of hard getting them out.
Oops. Almost done. It's not the best job ever, but... I want this board to be fixed. And the problem is it costs me more time actually to uh, fix it than to assemble one, so that's a pity, but... Uh, sometimes some perseverance is needed in your life, you know. Alright, I think we can go there. Um, not sure which tool we should use. So let's try this one here. I hope, I really hope I'm not killing the board with getting this one out. Uh, let's use some. Uh, Solar wire, great. Leads in. I like calling this leads. I think it's a German term for it. I always call it leads in. The solar wire. Right, so I want to get the chip out, it's not easy. Also, it's quite small on this uh, Harkin board. And it's not my design. Not that I uh, don't like a design, I really like the design, but it's not my design. That's what I want to say. So, don't get me wrong, it's really cool. Thing, these Harlequin boards. I think the quality of the board is actually quite good, so I don't think it will be damaged by doing this, but I always we want to be careful. Uh, still stuck a bit. Almost, uh, almost loose. Almost freed. I don't see any damage yet, so it's looking good. Now get out, as I always say to these boards. Alright, so it's out and no tracks or damage in the process. Alright, put that away. Clean up the pads, let's do some more tools here. Because I don't want to get any... Hey, this pin, pin inside the socket, so I broke one pin. Let's throw that away then. We'll get another one. Too bad we killed the chip. Alright. Okay, so everything is clean. Let me check to make sure there's no short. I still see some garbage here. It could potentially cause a short, and potentially I say because it's not very uh, often that you. Um, penetrate this the solder mask on the board and get to the copper so that you have really to you really have to do your best to do that um, so it's not really really a problem but just want to make sure you know all right so that final uh, chip is off there are no chips anymore on this board uh, only that the uh, resistor network which is not a chip as I told and let me do one more check to see if the AD724 tracks are clean. And there are no shorts there. There are no shorts, so that's no problem at all. Um, I also, also checked if the capacitors were soldered in correctly. Uh, even I make mistakes some, from time to time, so just want to make sure of that. There was nothing wrong with those. I'm doing another check. <laughs> I don't know why, because I already checked it, but anyway. Uh, so, all the chips are off. Let's do one final check before doing the more rigorous test. I just want to see if we get 5 volts now. And I actually don't, don't hope we do because then we'd be ready with this video. Okay, still no 5 volts. Only 9 volts. Okay. So, there's still something wrong with this board. And the next thing I told is I want to know if the where their 5 volt lines are going, so where, where is it going down? It should go down somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. Um, so we're going to continue looking. So we know that all the left top left pins of these chips are 5 volt. 
Uh, I'm sorry, except for the ZAD, it, it isn't that far fault on that, uh, on that pin, but uh, there's another pin for that. Um, right. So let's see. I think you can see it without mag magnifying glass. It's, oh, sorry, I should change the camera. Sorry for that. Uh, I can see it without magnifying glass because these tracks on the green board are quite clear. Um, so we should be able to see it this way. So we know that the, nine, the 5 volt is coming to this pin. Let me, let me show you by way. So the 5 volt is here, it's there, it's there, it's not here, it's a ZAD. There, there, and there. So we know there the 5 volt is uh, on those pins. And it come, those come from the top, top part of the board. And I can see it's going to that pin uh, on uh, the on the right. Let me check on the middle um, board, uh, middle uh, ramp chip here. So here's five volts. It's going down through the back. Let me double check. It should be exactly the same. Yes, it is. So we know this pin also has five volts, but I still don't know don't know where it's going downwards the rest of the board. It's not there. So where does it get down? Not here even. Maybe here where we just checked it. And on the top it stops on this pin. So I really wonder where it's going. Now we can see that it's going up here as well. So I wonder what it goes to. Okay so that seems to go to this pin which goes to here and also goes to that pin so we can we can actually we know that it's going from the back let me check again to so from the back it goes to this pin here yes and it goes here and then on the top it will go oh sorry on the bottom Double, double, double check. So this is five volts. Then it will go. Um, to dip pin here. Yes. And from there you can, you can actually see where it's going. So it's going here. It's going there. It's going here. TL712 and can I see if it's going this is the end point again so I guess it will go down it actually is going down to this pin here right and it's also going up to the capacitor and right and from here it goes down to this pin and to this pin so here's the feed, the feed of the actual net for these chips, um, but there's nothing going down here. That, that's a bit surprising. I would have thought maybe in the middle or on the right side it will go down, but it doesn't seem to be so. Hey, Jurgen, good evening. Welcome. Um, so let me check. So we have the five volts on the top here again. So there's a capacitor over there, over here, over here, uh, over here. Okay, so this is, these are all 5 volt nets, what we, what we draw here. So this is also on top, it goes to this capacitor, and nothing else as far as I can see on the top here. Uh, but it has to go down even more, so we want to find out where. Let me check. We don't need the soldering iron right now, so let me switch that out. Alright, so I want to know where it goes from one of those parts, nothing from that. I think I actually saw it. Let me check. It's hard to see now. There's a there's one connection here, which is the lower of the two. So here it's going down. So I can actually see that from this pin here, we're going down to the other um, transistor there, five volts again, and from there as well to that transistor, I guess. Let me check. Four pins here. Yeah, it's a transistor and the resistor to the side. So this one here, and we're continuing to go down. 
to there and that's where it ends on this side uh, let me check if there are connections on the top side nope nope okay so now i'm surprised again <laughs> where's it going from here then so you cannot see it with all the parts on the board so i have to check this board here um, Some, some tracks are really routed in a funny way. But <laughs> All right, so it's stopping here, and I don't know why, because I don't see any 5 volt lines going from that part anywhere else. So I'm puzzled again, so we have to check the back of this board, which is more clear, as I, uh, as I said. There's no other connection here, no vias or something. Nope. So that's uh, the end of that. Uh, let me check. If it's going somewhere from one of the other parts, uh, let me see. So we are, we are. So it's going to the outside pin here, which also goes to this capacitor, which is very normal. Uh, then we go. Nothing from here. Nothing from there. There's again one going to the capacitor here. Oh, it's not a capacitor. Wait. That's a diode, okay, no problem. It's a diode, but it's, it's strange. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being mad. Okay, my bad. Okay, um, let's check it again. This is the second chip from the side, and uh, this is the five volt pin. This one here, and I already had that one. Okay, that's that's this this, this track I have. That's the one coming from above. All right, uh, does it go anywhere from there? Nope, only sideways. Hmm. So how is the rest of the board fed then? <laughs> we have to find out. We really have to find out. And I really want to know. All right, so from that pin here, I think there's a track going down. Let me double check. Yeah, this one goes to here. Not on the other chip, only this one. Is there a trick going from there anywhere else then? Yeah, to the inside. Uh, oh no, I'm, I'm wrong again. Uh, let me check. So it's this track that's connected to nothing, only that pin. Okay, it's a, it's a just connection between two, two pins. Nothing strange there. All right, still haven't found... Um, the other the feed, the feed, the feeding of the other nets and I really want to find out how this that's done because then we can continue to decide which tracks we will cut for the testing and I haven't found it yet of course we can cut it here but but it's I still want to know how the other uh, chips are fed so we're going to do it from the uh, scene from the chips for example this pin here uh, this is obviously 5 volts so 5 volt going here Going up, going there, going here, going there. All right. I uh, don't see any other connections between those two parts. And this is this is all the the only th stuff connected on the top side of the board. So there should be a connection to the rest of the five volts somewhere. Not on that pen. Nope. Okay, you can see a connection here to the second chip. It's connected to this capacitor only, of course. <laughs> of course it is. Uh, that's not what we're looking for. And here we can see a track going down. Not up, but down. I can see the track going up here. So that, that's what we need to find out in a minute. But first, because I'm here already, uh, let me check where this one is going. So it's going to the inside, then it's going down only to the last pin here and then it's going down again to that one so this is connection between those two nets um, so the next thing I want to know is the, the chip in the corner here that has an actual connection to the capacitor of course but also to the above parts by this line here that's the one that I was missing so this is the way that these nets are connected that's the first thing I wanted to check out uh, I can check the, the the other parts on the, on the 
uh, lower end of the board. But I think the best thing would be to cut the two nets in half and do, do a cut somewhere here. So we can find out if the short is in the top part of the board or in the lower part of the board. So um, let me just do that. We're going to cut. Um, okay, so the connection was on the bottom and that's where we are here from the second chip. So it's the one going down here. So this is a clear, very a simple and clear cut here. I know it's very, kind of destructive, but we can fix it easily later on. So we have just removed the 5 volts. And that, that's something we're going to measure. So there's no more 5 volts for going from the regulator here to that part. So it's here and it's not here. So we did a good cut. Nothing wrong with that. Now, uh, sorry, this is the blackboard, of course, I'm stupid. So I have to, <laughs> that's my bad completely, uh, we were working on this board, you know. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So this this is where I should cut and I should fix the other board because that was not the board we were working on. I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, but no problem, you'll manage. All right, connected, not connected. That's exactly what we want. This is ground, just to make sure that it's no shorter. All right, so we can work on that one. We have to fix this one, that's for later. All right. Um, so let's see if we get uh, the, uh, the 5 volts on the die card now. No, still not. Still no 5 volts on the die card. So we still have a problem on the top side of the board, the upper, upper side of the board. Um, so we have to continue cutting. Um, let me just make sure I not forget the problem I just created with the other board. So I'm going to put a small label on it with, a, with an arrow so I know where to fix it. It's quite easy. Why not? All right, so it's there. Okay. Um, so I would say just do another cut. Um, so we can do it here or maybe here. Doubting a bit. We can also create a cut here, but it's on the top side and can be a bit hard also to fix it up later on because we cannot reach those tracks quite easily. Oh, sorry, I forgot the camera again. <coughs> so, uh, what would be the best because we cannot reach this quite easily? It will be a bit hard, but we can we can do an easy cut there. So, um, but maybe it's better to do the cut on this track here first. Where's my yes knife? Okay, so I would say from the first uh, chip here, we're going to cut that track. Let's do it here. This is the easiest way. Okay, let's measure it. If we actually did a correct cut. So we got connection here and there's no connection there. So, okay, let's check again. Hey Ben, good evening, man. Um, and thank you, by the way. Let me check again if we got five volts now. Still no five volts, okay. So I get the feeling the problem is either in this corner or on the top of the board, but one of those. <coughs> All right. So, okay. Uh, so we did a cut here. We didn't solve it that way. So what would be the next? Um, what is the most wise thing to do? I think we can cut it here because it's on the bottom as well, which is the easiest at this moment. And that's from this pin from the um, TL712 going to that capacitor and then to that pin and I wonder which I should cut first but I think I already see something I think I already saw something I can see and I will I will show you if I can I can see a small track with solder mask yeah yeah shut up going from this pad here of the uh, capacitor, I think. Let me check. No, it's a diode 
from the diode pin to this ground plane here. So let me check. I can measure it, but I think I just saw it, so I want to make sure that's it. I, I thought I uh, already found out a couple of other things like these, but this could be it. There's really something there. It's so small. I, I want to, to try to show you because it's it's hardly noticeable, and I think and the camera won't pick it up. But I just want to try anyway. So let me first do the put the camera on manual focus. Just a second. And this is just a if if it, this is the case, then it's a manufacturing uh, error, which sometimes happens. Um, it's not the first time. So it's at at, uh, at this finger here. Uh, let me focus just a second. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong camera again. Oh, so stupid. Dude, those cameras look alike a lot. So let me do it again. Uh, yep. So it's uh, the square pad in the middle, uh, right above the middle of my finger here. And maybe you can see it. I, I, I think I can see it on the camera. There's this very small track going to the ground plane above it. Can you see it? I can see it. And that's actually a defect uh, from the from factory. Let me let me check if I can yeah I think it's I think it's uh, I'm not sure but it looks like there's a short there. And maybe it, it's such a small short, such a small track that it's really hard to measure, but I'm not sure exactly. It really looks like a track going yeah, I think I think it's a very uh, it's it's because it's almost not a short. It's uh, causing some kind of uh, resistance between those um, between the pad and the the ground plane. But I'm not completely sure. We have to check it out. Could still be anything else. So before cutting anything else, I'm just going to get rid of the potential short and then test the board again. Let's see if we just found it. It's always hard when you have a ground plane um, next to those parts to actually not cause more problems than you are solving. Be careful of, of course with a knife of, uh, as always. You don't want to get stuff in your eyes. Okay, let me check. It's hard to see, so I have to use some filing tool make sure all right I'll clean it up a bit just using one common swap here so uh, maybe it's better if uh, if Donna would have used a bit more distance sp uh, spacing between the solder mask and the, the pads because they're really close to each other and, and, and this can happen more easily of course <laughs> there's still the garbage in between so just a second more To completely make sure that's no short anymore there. Still not complete and not a success, so I'm going to cut away a bit more here. I'm going to remove some solar with the uh, soldering iron. I think it is good enough. So 
So this is a uh, one of the pins from the diode, and I cannot see any short anymore. So we're going to check. No, we, we actually. All right. So there's another pin. Uh, so we actually seem, or not? <laughs> no, no, no. There's no short here. But it's still very close, so I don't like that at all. I want to make some more distance. It's just a ground plane, it's not too uh, too important around the pad there, so I'm just going to cut away some more. <coughs> Alright, oh, I'm still using the wrong camera. Hey Chris, the, the problem is uh, that this board has some kind of... Um, it's, I, I call it dynamic short on 5 volt. Um, but we just I was just checking where the... 5 volt tracks on the board go, and I found that one of the pads here of one of, uh, of a diode uh, seemed to have a very thin uh, track or connection um, between the diode pin uh, pad and the ground plane here, and it seems to be um, something uh, a small defect on the board when it came from the factory. So uh, just I'm cutting away some of the ground plane around it. Ground plane, sorry. And I think we did enough now, so it's about time for some testing. It's really a pain when you have something like this, because I can imagine it for people building it uh, with uh, less solar experience, soldering experience. Uh, this is a real pain to debug. But maybe it's a good thing then uh, to show you what it can actually can be. It's really useful having a uh, magnifier at hand. But with DIY kits maybe it would have been better even to uh, to have a, a board with uh, some more spacing between the, those pads and ground planes, you know. It's uh, it's not doing anything, it just uh, gets five volt in, oh, sorry, nine volts in but there's nothing coming out. Okay, there's no short anymore there. That's because of the top connection. So we're going to do another test. At the other side, of course. So. Let's see. Do we have five volts now? No, nope, still no five volts. Oh man. That's a pity. Okay, so that well, probably wasn't it. I really wish it would have been. So we have to continue debugging. Uh, so we were... I was about to cut another track before I uh, found that uh, potential issue. So we know that the viral is coming from above here. And uh, so I want to do the cut for of this track uh, on the bottom of the board which is actually this one, just where we uh, were, were working a minute ago. So I'm going to just cut it. So we're still trying to rule out parts of the board. We know it's a problem on a 5 volt line. Yeah, clean cut, nothing wrong with that. No shorts at all. <coughs> so let's do another test. And if it's not this, sorry, if it's not that part of the of the net, uh, because we just cut off this part here because we did another cut already. So this this whole side, this whole corner is now being uh, disconnected from the five volt line. Um, and I have the feeling it's something some, something or, um, with these parts, but I'm not sure. It could be a transistor. I'm not sure because the, those transistors, of course, are active parts. Those could still be it. Or maybe capacitor or something, but those are from an A brand, so I don't expect there any problem there. But still, there could be a problem. Um, right. So let's do another test and see if the problem is in this part of the schematic or in this part of the schematic. That's what we want to know now. All right. Do we have five volts or not? Nope. Still no five volts. All right. So that actually means that the problem is. At the first, let's call it stage of the 5 volt net here, somewhere over there. 
<laughs> we still have to find out which one it is. Could be a capacitor. I have a couple of capacitors here. Maybe one of them is uh, defective. Uh, that sometimes happens. It should not because I don't want people to get defective parts um, when they want to assemble such a kit. <coughs> but of course, I cannot rule out uh, everything. Uh, and we do actually uh, test all 100 nanofarad uh, capacitors, which are a lot because there, go, uh, there are 24 100 nanofarad capacitors in these boards. And we do test all of them because we buy them from China and it's uh, better to test them instead of buying local ones because there is so, so much more expensive. Alright, so let's do a quick test if we did actually get all the 5 volt uh, uh, detached from, the, from a large part of the board. So we shouldn't have any 5 volts on this pin here. Uh, 5 volts, so we have 5 volts here. No, that's true. But we should have 5 volts here. Yeah. And we shouldn't have 5 volts here. Okay, because we did disconnection of that track. So there's something wrong at that side of the board. And so there's 100 nanofarad which is tested on, on here. Uh, the other one is not going to 5 volts. Nope. Um, So you usually hope that the problem is more easy to find. Uh, let me check, this is ground. So I'm still puzzled. What could it be? What could it be? So I guess it should be some of the parts um, in the beginning of the net. Um, it could still be such a small, a small short somewhere, but really uh, my experience is that if there is a short to ground, for example, that it's uh, a real short and you can measure it by um, measuring zero ohms and that's not the case here so I really wonder what it is then this is 5 volts 5 volts 555 five, five. right there's a capacity here is it connected to this one as far as I know yes it's not <sighs> okay um, well I think we just have to do another cut then I don't like it, but <laughs> I don't think we have much of a choice. So we're going to separate this part now from this part by cutting somewhere between these two here. Uh, that's the easiest because I can reach it quite easily. Oh wait, I can see one of the tracks going down there. Which one is it? Which one is that? I can see it's going down. Where is it going then? Maybe that's the track that, I'm, that I missed here. So this this one this is probably still connected. Let me check. Let me check. So I bet that this is still connected to this. Uh, no, it's not. That's odd. Hmm, it's not connected. But where is the track going? Oh, I want to know. Yeah, let me check. Um, where is that track going? So I'm noticing connection there which is this one here is it going up or down I guess down it's going down no it's going up oh, okay <laughs> okay this is actually the one going to the edge connector that's easy isn't it <laughs> that's obvious Believe it or not, but I can see this very small solder blob there. But I don't think that's causing a short. Well, I removed it, so let's do another check. Oh, let me get the camera. I should, 
maybe I should have a, I should use a camera that automatically switched to uh, that side of the room. <laughs> uh, I could also uh, use two YouTube channels, <laughs> so you can see uh, two sides of the room at the same time. No, nope, still no five volts. I didn't expect it at all, so just wanted to make sure. All right. Now it's not all, not only yours, uh, Marek, but this is a. Uh, one I actually bought from Don himself, and the other black ones I have made. My, uh, so this is bought from another factory. Uh, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> uh, but every every problem can be solved, you know. Um, all right. So your your problem should be solved as well, uh, Mark. Um, I want to have to respond to your messages still. So sorry for that. All right. Let me try to do another cut. I think. So we did a cut here, and maybe it's best to cut it after the, the, the pad that's going to the edge connector. It doesn't matter that much, but, but anyway, I think uh, I think it's a good idea. Just, so we are going to cut it here. Let me find a clean spot for that, because I don't want to create any other damage. Oh, wrong camera again. So we're going to do a cut here on the top side of the board this, this time. We're still trying to find where the board is failing. And, and there might be better ways of doing this, but um, this is one of the ways. If you've got strange problems like this. And I really hope it's not something else, but uh, the die card is just not working. so. I cannot think of anything else. Okay, we did a clean cut again. Let's check it out. So we got five volts on <coughs> this capacitor here, and it's going until this chip, and it's not going to this chip, indeed. But it's going to the pad on the back, so we can still measure the output going to this pin. All right, that's okay. So let's do another test, and um, we all uh, we only at the moment have a connection between the five volt output of the regulator going to the right uh, RAM chip, the ROM chip, Z80, and this HC245. Not anything else. So we want to check if um, the board is still not powering up completely. Let it, let me check on the other side again. So, still no five volts. What the hell is this? Okay. So I'm getting more puzzled by the second. What could it be? Could it be the capacitor? There's not much left, you know. Could it be this big capacitor here? Let's uh, let's get it out. I don't think so, but let's get it out. I soldered it in correctly, so that's not a problem. So, there are only three parts on, the, on this part of the board at this moment. Thanks, man. <laughs> no, I just I, I did check if any component did get warm. So we only have this capacitor and those two 100 nano ferret capacitors. And those are the only three parts, of course, except for the regulator, that are still on here. And it could be this capacitor, you know, the, what is it, 20, 22, I think, 22 microfarad. Um, but they're from an A brand, and I never had this situation before, so it would surprise me. I like uh, troubleshooting as well, but it is, is time consuming, and I really should uh, make money instead of uh, on troubleshooting only, you know. So we removed that capacitor. And one of the things we can do is make sure if it's really working or not, because we have these cool multimeters, which also do capacitance. So it's now at, oh, this is diode, this is capacitance, and we can just measure it. And I think it should say 22, let me check. Yeah, 22. Plus, minus. Oh. 
Right, it says 22. So it doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the capacitor. Anyway. <laughs> cool. Goedemorgen, of goedenavond, Michael. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay, so we remove it. There could still be uh, something else wrong with the with that spot. Uh, the input. There's also a capacitor on input. I don't think that will be a cause, but well, no, let's do a test first because before continuing, it is always best to check it out. Do a quick test. It will work. You're not seeing it. <laughs> nope. Still no five volts. Dang it. Um, okay, I'm going to remove these uh, 100 nano capacitors. I'm not giving up. That's one. What is the problem with this board? Let me clean the holes. No, come on, man. All right. And the other one was here. By the way, this uh, this morning we started with ordering parts from uh, local suppliers like Farnell and TME and Rouser and from China again. And I really hope that the situation will recover soon, uh, of course for the people them themselves there, but also because I really need parts. <laughs> it's a really big problem for me, if I don't get parts in I cannot produce any more stuff, you know. Um, Alright, so I think the contacts are quite clean. Let me do a quick cotton swab here. So that took about three hours, all the all the work for uh, buying, maybe four hours in total. So the capacitors are removed now and the contacts are clean. The only one that's remaining is the, the capacitor on 9 volts input. Right. I think we can do another test. It should be working. Yeah, they could use it as an excuse, but I, I really think that there is, uh, there's some truth in it because um, uh, some factories are still closed and some factories will open uh, uh, on the 20th or, or later. So I really wonder how long it will take uh, for the factories to reopen and to get back and to process all the, re the backlog, of course, that they have. Oh, please, please, please give me five volts. No, what, the, what is wrong with this board? What's wrong with this board? It's a sick board. All right. Now, one of the things that is remaining are the, the pins on the on the actual chips. So let's remove some of the solder here. I really, I really am confused what this could be. I never had this before. It's really, really frustrating. 
Right. So it still goes to this part as well. No, this is Z80. That doesn't go to the Z80. I do wonder how the Z80 is fed. I mean, uh, from which side? Because it is fed, uh, sorry, you have to check. So I haven't checked yet <coughs> how the set it is powered. We measure on this board which pin is connected to wire holes. So frustrating that it's just shutting down when you're working with it. That's the only downside of this multimeter. Hmm? Okay, maybe it's getting can can power from the downside but we because we did a cut here so I think so yeah I think so so I guess it's powered from this side here which isn't a problem yeah okay good so it's powered from the <coughs> bottom of the board so it's not it's no issue at all <coughs> it's not it's not connected so anyway <coughs> we still have a problem with this board we just disconnected a couple of the pins from the chips there that were still connected to 5 volts. <coughs> and I think... No. Strange. What could it be? <coughs> could it be the capacitor on the input? No. I don't think so. <coughs> we could, by the way, just measure the capacitance. So let's just do that. It's a 10 microfarad capacitor, so that's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. <coughs> so let's do another test with the uh, pins disconnected and uh, the soldering. Still only 9 volts. So, um, well, what could it be then? Okay, um, I think we're going to do the most rigorous thing we can do. And let's do a cut at the beginning of the 5 volts here. I don't want to do it. But I want to make sure if it's something with the voltage regulator, which I tested already. So, that couldn't be it, but you never know. Or maybe the capacitor or something else. Oh, I forgot to switch cameras. So, I just did a cut here. So, at the, the start of the... 5 volt power net, so no more connection there, Let me double check, ok, so this, this has, that has been disconnected, uh, oh, of course, ah, if we disconnect that, we cannot measure it on the pin over there, 
So we have to measure it on the voltage regulator itself now. So the die card won't show up the 5 volt anymore at this moment. Um, I think we're going to just measure it at this side. Uh, issue is just uh, no 5 volts and there's no static short on, on the 5 volt line or something. Yeah, we did a couple of cuts on the board, still didn't find anything. So we're going to connect it and measure the 5 volts before we switch it on. Let me put the probes on it here. Put it on the voltage. And we still have no 5 volts. So there's really something wrong in the beginning of the board. I really wonder what it is. We do get a 9 volt, no 5 volts. <coughs> so it is something at the power circuit only. How stupid can it be? I'm getting, uh, I'm getting that capacitor out. I want to know if the capacitor is causing this issue. I don't think so, but it still be it. Right. Alright, so the only thing that's in now is the 5 volt regulator. And I, I say again, I tested it already. So it couldn't be it couldn't be it, but what else could it be man? Now I must say I don't like the solder of the input wire of the voltage regulator, but I cannot think that that could be caused. We still don't have any 5 volts, so could that be it? I, I soldered it out in and out a couple of times, so I'm just noticing now that let me let me show you what I mean. So. This point here doesn't seem to be that uh, soldered that well, so the the ingoing pin, the nine volt pin, and I do wonder, by the way, how where the uh, how it's routed to the nine volt pin on the edge connector. Well, let me check. All right, so there's a, a pin going from here to. To all the way over there, and I wonder where, where else it's going. I don't know. <laughs> um, but this can't be it, and I say that because I already tried a trigger power regulator, which didn't solve the problem. So this is the 9 volt pin, yeah. Let me check again. So it's going from this pin here to there, this 9 volt, but it's also going to R8. So what's that for? What's R8 for? What's R8 for? I'm just wondering. Let me check the schematic. R8. What's that kind? What is that of a circuit? Uh, I don't know. R8. Let me get the schematic out here. Alright. Let's get to the power parts. Which is over here. So this is the input power, the socket of course, then uh, the 9 volt goes into the to the 
Huh? This is odd. Oh, of course. No, it's not odd. This is the uh, regulator. In this, in our case, we are using the CDC converter. Um, but what is R8 for then? Sorry, R8. Can we find R8? The, the beep beeping is from uh, the temperature outside. It's freezing again. Um, R8. I have absolutely no idea what R8 is used for. So I'm trying to find out if we can actually find R8. <laughs> Where is R8? I don't see it. Could it be the video schematic? I actually think more of audio, but uh, it's not. It's not here. All right. Nope. 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 I absolutely have no idea where it's going to. Three, four, five. Seven. Shut up. <laughs> R8. Where's R8? I don't think I've seen it yet. <laughs> um. Oh, you did it. 9 volts. Okay. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. I know what it is for. And it is quite interesting, by the way. This is uh, the Xena diode creating the voltage level that is required for RGB blanking, which is on pin 2 here. So that's a voltage divider. That's, that's the only thing with a... Well, I, I, should, I should say it uh, differently. So it's creating a voltage. Um, I'm not sure the 4 2 which voltage that is, so let me check the I did John I did all the chips are out already um, let me check the 1N4742 four, uh, one four, four, that's which um, 12 volts. How can it be 12 volts? 12 volts Zener? It's powered by 9 volts. <laughs> okay, it's probably, uh, I don't know, I don't know exactly. I think it's, it's probably just below 9 volts or something. Um, so it's actually 12 volt Zener, which is strange because uh, there's no 12 volts on this board. So I don't know exactly how this works. Okay, cannot think, find anything here. Um, um, but because it's still going to a part of the schematic with some active parts, uh, could there still be a problem there? I cannot believe it, but... So R8. Which is a 150 ohm resistor, nothing special. And the diode there is the 5. But I found another short. 
let me show you. Actually, on that diode, so maybe it is still a problem. I will show you again. So, the top of the diode, D D5, so the 12 volt diode at my uh, at that finger. <laughs> Let me uh, uh, sharpen it here. There is a uh, on the bottom of the of the pad, top pad there. There is a small short. I think you can see it. Let me get closer and sharpen it. I think you can. You can see the short between the pad and the and the ground plane. Can you see it? Um, so that's the part where it's connected to the 9 volt through a 150 ohm resistor, by the way. Oh, I'm a bit fuzzy. So that could be a cause. Um, so let's remove that short. I guess it's a short, but we can measure it, of course. But because that short is not directly on the 5 volt but through a resistor of 180 ohm, that could actually be the reason. Doesn't seem to be connected to ground. So I actually don't think so, but I want to make sure. No, that's not short. <sighs> Another. Not a failure. <laughs> We're still looking. Yeah, we'll measure R8, by the way. That's a good one. It was really a solder blob, but uh, most probably it wasn't connected to ground. Well, uh, we'll just lift uh, R8 on one side, but that's easy. To thing to do of course here. So that's done. We're going to do another test. Uh, swap the camera. Nope. I'm full of Alright. <sighs> um, and yeah well what could it be then? Uh, sorry, of course, uh, I just said that the die card is not showing the firewall anyway because we did count the track, so we cannot measure it that way. We can only measure it by the multimeter at this moment. So, 5 volts. Nope. Still not. So, uh, we have 9 volts, yeah, we have 9 volts, so 9 volts going in. So at this moment, uh, although I really don't, don't like it, it does seem that the pin on the um, voltage regulator, is, I, I just noticed it a couple of minutes ago, is not soldered on correctly um, and I did a couple of resolders so I, I think it's the second problem then that has occurred but you can see that uh, the 5 volt pin is actually quite open I did, didn't check it well so my bad so we're going to resolder that and hope it will make good contact then but as I said I already got this out a couple of times so I don't think this is the cause but still can be. If we get five volts now, we can uh, we can get back. Can the part can get the parts back in. But for some reason, the pin is still not soldering. My God, could it be that the whole time it was just that bloody pin and it doesn't want to solder? Could it be? That would be the first time. It's, it's, a, it's just a pin header, you know. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder another pin header. Because I think that might just be it. I've never had this before. It would be the 
stupidest thing ever, but... And I, I do wonder, I did test another Cherco power regulator, so why didn't that work then? But maybe there, there were two errors, and it's still the possibility. Uh, Murphy's Law, you know. Uh, first we're going to replace that um, pin header here. <laughs> Don't translate that from Jan, please. <laughs> Alright, let's get it in. So I guess we had two problems, but the goal here is to get the board working again. Uh, let me put this in my funny, uh, funny finger thingy. getting a bit big mess here. <laughs> we'll clean it up in a minute once we have uh, some results. Alright, now let's clean up the pads. I think you're making the wrong assumptions, Jan. <laughs> it's not related at all. But I uh, can imagine uh, the idea. So although these uh, DC-DC regulators come from China the, and are a lot cheaper than the Turkey power ones, they are a very good quality. Never had any problem with these ones and I do test all of them by the way before uh, using them in Harlequin kits. Um, but they're just a lot cheaper, you know, and the reason is that there's no branding on these. Uh, but I guess they're made of about the, the same parts as the Turkey power ones. This, this, the only difference is the trickle bar ones are smaller and there is a brand on it too. So, but I really do like these uh, cheaper ones as well. These ones uh, fit quite nicely on the Harkin 128 boards. And so I bundle them with these kits. And the trickle bar ones actually don't fit that well um, next to these capacitors here, so that's another reason. Okay, we sold it on again, and this time a better connection than previously, so let's measure it up. Now, well, uh, if that would, would have been the case, Peter, then uh, we would have seen it, uh, we, the, the tracker power one should have worked, you know, so that wasn't the case. So that's why I still think it's, uh, it's not the regulator. So let's do a measurement again on um, voltage, and I bet we get 5 volts now. No! Still no 5 volts! We get 9 volts. No 5 volts. So I'm clueless. So 
So we're going to take another one then, another power voltage regulator, and see uh, that will uh, that will help. What could this be? Because again, I tested this uh, regulator separately. There wasn't any problem. So I'm still puzzled. This is the most difficult, annoying job ever. So let me just show you how I test these. So I got a, a small port that I use for testing several parts here. There's a uh, rectifying bridge in between. We get some power. Just a second. All right. So we've got nine volts here. And switch it off at this moment. But what I do then is let me get this off first, or just put it down. I go to two. Uh, we can do this, all right? So I put it in this location here, and then I, whoop, I measure the output with my multimeter. Another one, uh, port. All right. Oh, so this is the output, and this is the negative pin. And this shows 5 volt. Oh, this minus 5 volt. Why is that? Uh, because this is output. This is the nine, uh, minus. Sorry. Uh, my bad. So this one shows 5 volt. So the regulator is working. Why isn't it working on this board? That's what I need to know. That's what puzzles me. So there's something wrong at the beginning of this dang board. <laughs> and I really need to know what it is. What's going on here? It's, it can't be anything else. It, can't be, it cannot be anything on the board anymore. There's nothing on this board anymore. The only thing that is the, the wire going to the resistor which I, which I pulled, pulled, uh, pulled up. So, Well, there's no load on this board as well, Peter. So this, this, that shouldn't be the, 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 the problem. The, the, the load is not the problem. And again, I also put a trickle regulator on this and fill as well. Now I just pull the pad, but it's no problem because the pads are at the bottom, the connecting pads. Um, but this is so frustrating. What is this, man? <laughs> uh, okay, this is the output. It's so frustrating. We will, however, find it. But <laughs> so we, we dig it down to the incoming circuit here. So this is the this is the nine volt coming in. Uh, it shouldn't be on uh, either. It should not be on something else than on this pin. It's it is hard to see because there are a lot of other signals in between here, but. I cannot believe there's any sh short here. This is the pin going up, okay. <sighs> what could it be? What could it be? Why is this board being this hard? something with the, the socket which is a quality socket quite expensive by the way I have no idea this is odd what the hell the pad is not connected that's odd. The 5 volt pad 
is not connected to the to the capacitor and outgoing lines. What? So that's a problem. The pad is dead. What is wrong with the pad? What the hell? Look! What the hell? There is a pad there, but it's not... I don't know what it is. What's wrong with this pad? The pad is not connected. Look, there's a pad underneath. So the pad is disconnected from the rest of the board. The pad! It's just a pad! Let me show you, because you cannot see it. Really? You cannot notice that the pad is not connected. I haven't checked it before, but let me let me show you. So that pad, uh, the one on the outer end of the board. So that pad, the outer end of the board. Um, uh, let me, uh, of course I have to focus, but uh, it's the pad in the outer end of the board. So at the middle of my finger there, let me focus first. Right, so that pad. That pad is not connected. Can you see it's not connected? I cannot see it. If you ask me, it's connected. But it's not. Does it show it's connected? No, there's really, it's really connected. There's really metal on the pad. You can see the metal on the pad, but it's not connected. I've never had this before. <laughs> this is crazy, man. Bloody board. I'm going to use my magnifier glasses so you can try to see if what it is. It's really not noticeable. I really cannot see there's a disconnect, disconnect there. What the hell? So I actually should have just measured the pin on the regulator. And not the pin on the capacitor connected to the regulator. And then I would have found out that the regulator was actually up in 5 volts. So I clean it up. And yeah, there's a disconnect there. It's really disconnected. There's a, the line, the, the pad has been broken off of the of the track there. So, oh, sorry, of the pad. Okay, that's the solder back in. And we're going to use some jumper wire for it. And then it will work. Very odd. I've never seen this before on a Harkin board. So, now we need a jumper wire, which is of course obviously not an issue at all. But and I usually use very thin wires, but for this, because it's a power line, I will use a bit thicker wire. Of course. Or it doesn't consume much, but still. Alright. Let's cut it. And it's soldered to the SMD position for a capacitor. And now I'm certain that we have 5 volts again. And because of that, I'm going to just put, put back in some other parts here. This is so ridiculous. Going to connect these two pad. Sorry, these this cut track here. Um, might just add a jumper wire to the pin of the capacitor, but you can do both options. So I think we'll just add a wire on top here. Easy fix. All right. Just a little more solder. Okay, so this way we have 5 volts on a die card in a second. Uh, we're going to solder back all the capacitors uh, later on, but just want to know if we get uh, 5 volts on a die. Uh, I think that's important to know now. 
Um, so I think we're we're set up for that. Let's get to the other side. All right. So this time I expect five volts on the regulator. Let's see. We have, there was a short five volt, but it immediately shuts down. That's odd. short. It's 5 volts per second and it shuts down. Let me check for shorts. No short. It's connected now, so that's not a problem. It's not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's connected to the up, upside, uh, upper side, so that's not an issue. Although, why? Why am I not measuring five volts on the second pin here then? <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah, that's true. But that, that's, that's another thing. I uh, disconnected the, the pads, or I cleaned out the pads here. Okay, let's put it back. It's cleaned. Alright. It's not an issue anymore. But that's not the problem for the power bolt missing on the edge connector. It's there for a second and then it goes away, so I wonder where that is. We have a clean connection, so that's not a problem. Uh, what could it be? Um, what could that be? I'm going to do a short test with the uh, die card, so maybe we can just measure it with the multimeter. Let's do just that. Now I'm puzzled again, because it says 8 volts, that can be true. What the hell is going on here? So now we have 9 volts. Eight volts in the output. Eight volts in the output. What could that be? Why do we have eight volts in the output? Is it now completely dead? Did we kill it? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's a burn. But we only get eight volts now. Um, that can be. That can be correct. So I guess the regulator is now fried, maybe? Which is odd. But if so... Hmm, I'm really doubting. So let's put in another regulator. <laughs> because I'm really doubting what this could be. But I don't trust the regulator anymore. This is not the easiest thing ever, you know. I've been working on this for a couple of hours now. This is way too long, but we just want results now, don't, you? don't we? <laughs> At least I want. Maybe uh, I, sh I should check the ground connection as well, because it's only one pin, you know. But there's a problem there now.
what is wrong with my color. That works. They're a bit long still, so I must a little bit shorter here. Alright. So let's do some measurements because I want to know if we have a good uh, ground connection now. Nope. So now the ground connection is an issue. <laughs> so more jumper wires I guess. Maybe the voltage regulator was good but we broke off more pads. Could be. But that, that turn, it turns out that the board quality isn't that good here. So we're going to fix it this way, another jumper wire. Family downstairs. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, this should be it. Let's see if we get 5 volts. Yeah, 5 volts finally. We have a stable 5 volt now. And I guess the ground track broke with all the attempts. So let's see, we got a 5 volt on the die card now. So the last thing we will now do is uh, solder back the, the cuts we made, we made and do some testing and then we're done. So let's see, where did we do the cuts? Uh, we did one more on top I think, yeah? This will be uh, my board, don't worry. <laughs> I won't sell this to anyone. So my best guess is that the pad uh, broke with the first attempt of soldering in the regulator. And that must have been the main problem with this board all along. Um, and I did find some other scores, but that, that, was, that was probably didn't cause the five fold missing, to go missing. So that's my best guess. Um, let's put in. Let's put back in the mat capacitors that we checked already. All right. Okay. Let's open up the capacitor holes here. There's one close. Again, I think the board quality is quite low. Uh, it actually reminds me of uh, another board I once had, which uh, had pads that came loose very easily. And this makes, this, I, I bet it's from the same factory, but I'm, I'm not sure of course. Anyway, uh, there's another hole closed, so let's have that as well. So I say, uh, about 10 more minutes and then the board is working, so don't worry, not taking too long now.
and I still think the other regulator is okay, but <coughs> we'll check that out later. Okay, I need to do some measurements because I had a feeling that the truck was coming uh, come off the board as well. Okay, that's fine. It all seems to be connected. All right, uh, let's get back in the two 100 nanofarad capacitors so those weren't the issue. cameras again. That's one. The other one. We should uh, improve the brightness of this camera a bit because it's not as dark as it looks. On camera, I think. Now let's find the other cuts we did on the, at the bottom of course. Uh, so we did one mm, I forgot. <laughs> here, and I sure this is on well here we did a cut here. Alright, let's connect it back first. So I never expected that the issue was a broken pad. Really? And especially at the, the at, <laughs> at the actual voltage regulator itself, you know, that's not what I uh, would have thought of. I'm glad I found it, but I didn't feel that good about it. I always uh, use some uh, super glue on the, these kinds of connections, but it's for later. First, I want to find the other cuts I did. I did one more. So I did one here. Yeah, that was there. Okay, and did we have any more? I think here. No, we just re uh, repaired that. So we did one there, we did one here, uh, somewhere. Or didn't we? We did one there, but I don't think we did one here. So, okay, this one, this one, and uh, this one, this one, and I think those were it. Yeah, I think so. So then let's check if all the connections are uh, repaired now. That should mean that we've got 5 volts everywhere. 
Not yet, it seems. <laughs> so there's one more connection that's not working. Maybe it's just the one that I tried to repair. Or is there still one that I forgot? I see one I forgot. Okay. This one here. So maybe it's good to just make this video anyway, because people see that sometimes it can be a pain to find a problem on the Harlequin board. Uh, what can I say about it, you know, it, it's, it's just, you know, these are complex boards, you can call them, because there are loads of uh, connections and tracks on it, and there can be many things that go wrong. It's, a good, it's of course good that we um, do not use, need a relay chip anymore, but um, instead of that there are plenty of things that go, can go wrong on boards like these. But I think still it's, it's quite a nice challenge to uh, build one of these and uh, if you find an error to debug and find out where it is. So I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing. Okay, we got 5 volts everywhere now, so I'm going to get back to the other side. Uh, oh, wait, 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 we just didn't put the AD724 on it, so we won't get any video output if we keep it this way. So I'm going to use my gear and put it back where it came from. Right. So, uh, of course, you can also you do this by with a normal soldering wire. But for now, this is good enough. It's connected. It's not the best connection, but I think we get output. Just we'll add some flex to it. Now we can put back in all the chips and we should get some results now. Right, so first let's test again if we still have 5 volts and 9 volts. We shouldn't have changed it in any way, but just want to make sure. Oh! <laughs> and again, we do not have 5 volts. For some reason, am I? <sighs> okay. Um, why not? Why not? Okay, we, we did put back in all the parts here. Let's check for a short. This board is such a mess. <laughs> I should have just got on the blackboard. Anyway, uh, 5 volts. Yeah, we now have a, a, an actual short on 5 volt. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's get back to uh, work desk once again. So where is this short coming from now then? Oh man. Let me take up some stuff first. Is it the AD724? Or is it something else? I don't know. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, detach one of the connections we made to see if the... Uh, by the way, we can just test it here now because we got 9 volts, so...
I think we're almost done. I thought we uh, we would have it already, but all right, almost done then. So cleaning up a bit. All right, so let's get one of the. Uh, tracks we just fixed. Let's get it back off again and see if one of the parts, of the parts of the boards, is causing this error. Or actually, which one? Because we actually know there is a problem. So no short. So it's not that area. That's easy to check. So the second one then. Let me think what is the easiest to try now. I think this one, but I don't think that will actually be the problem. Uh, I, think, I think I can see it from here. Yeah, it's my bad. It's this uh, this uh, connection that I made. And it's uh, connected to ground as well at the moment. So let me clean it up. Let me check if the short is gone now. Nope, it's still there. Okay, I should use something else for that. Because the because of the dang uh, um, because of the um, ground plane around it, it's very hard to make a clean connection here. So what I want I'm going to use is going to use the thinner wire which is a single core wire. Uh, it should be enough for 5 volts for, uh, to get over for, for on this board, but I, I preferably would use the thicker wire, but this should be enough. All right. So I guess it's gone now. Let me check. Yeah, it's gone. So it was actually uh, just one of the wires I put on the cup tracks, so we can put the other one back as well. This was really a troublemaking board. I don't like it at all. But we will make it work again. We will make this board great again. No more short. All right, and we do have five volts everywhere. Okay, so that problem is solved. That was a quick one. Let's get back to the other side again. And now we should be able to actually make this board uh, live again. Give it the juice it needs. Where is my testing board? Okay, we should have uh, five volts now. Yeah, five volts, no problem. Let's put back in all the parts. This is fun to do, of course. This is only uh, one minute of work, maybe two. Let's see. Can you see everything I'm doing? I think so. I'm not zoomed in, but. All right. Sometimes it's, it's fun to test uh, the power on the board in between before you put in all the chips, but <laughs> if you like, uh, strange things on your uh, video output and you're not scared easily then you could do that. <laughs> I had some cool effects with uh, with a couple of these. For example when uh, the clock going to the Z80 was uh, a lot higher than it should be. And of course uh, the rest of the board as well. Uh, that would that caused um, seeing four uh, for tiny specky screens at the, at the same time. It was quite cool to, uh, to see, but anyway. Um, let me put in all the chips. I, I put them in the correct sequence here on the, on the table, so it should be easy to put back in. I'm not worried about this. What do you think, guys? What's the chance that this board is now working? Oh, I, I'm missing one part. I, see, uh, I should solder in back the... Uh, 
HC174, so I should, we'll do that in a second. And then, then the question is, what do you think? What are my chances? <laughs> what do you think? Are you betting already? Who's placing bets? <laughs> Will I make money with your bets? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's put in a working C uh, um, animal CPU. I should put in a CMOS later on, but I just want to know if the board is working. You know? Alright, so as I just said, I uh, need to solder in one chip between the, or inside the IC socket for the EY chip, sound chip. We're going to do that in a minute. And then we are going to power it on. I'm, uh, I don't, I'm not sure from uh, what, the chip, what the missing chip is for, but I think it's an uh, important one. <laughs> so I'm not powering it on before we put the chip back in. And that's one that should be soldered to the board, so almost done. What do you think? Would you place a bet on this? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, 174. Alright. Okay. Almost done. The pin broke off of the other one, so we're going to pick a new one here. It doesn't want to get in. All right. Should I drop this board on eBay? <laughs> to get rid of it, you know. No, I'm just joking. Just joking. I wouldn't do that. All right. And it's easy. Uh, <laughs> it's easy uh, to fight this board because this is the only one uh, with all the uh, cut tracks and uh, so you know. All right. Uh, I will put back in even the a Y chip in the correct orientation, which is uh, sometimes hard. And I think it will work. Moment of truth. Uh, no sound, of course, because it is a track. <laughs> uh, but it works. See? It works. Woo -woo. Okay, and uh, the best thing to do now is uh, to play uh, R-Type for a couple of, couple of minutes. Oh yeah, it works. I know it works. Okay, R-Type. Give me R-Type. Just for a couple of minutes. I want to play R-Type. That's the first thing you should do in your toast, in your Hardikin kit. First thing, guys, always start with R type. R type is the best. Oh, it crashed. <laughs> Why did it crash? Oh, there's still something wrong. Uh, did I put it in the correct wrong configuration? Let me check. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this board, what is this board doing? So we we, sh we must run the die card and see what uh, what's going on. It might be uh, the the, C the CPU because I'm using a, an animal CPU, but it should work as well. Almost, almost. <laughs> Dang. Is there an error in memory? Does take long, but right, still running. I think it's a CPU. No errors yet. No wrong errors yet. So I think everything looks fine. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with memory. 
Uh, and actually, you know, uh, the die card ROM, um, the, the latest version, uh, version 0, uh, 37, uh, has the option to check what type of CPU it's in. Um, is in. So if you reset it and press, I think ULA, I'm not sure, let me check. Yeah, you can see it's an NMOS uh, CPU now. Can you read it on the screen? I'm not sure. Uh, so it is an NMOS CPU. And on the Harkin boards, there's usually a CMOS CPU. NMOS CPUs are, are the original ones for the ZX Spectrum. So let's put in a, a CMOS type now, and I will show you the difference. So now it should say CMOS, as you can see here. So anyway, I'm still not sure why uh, this wasn't running properly. Oh, I did a... Ah, okay, might be this jumper here. That changes the clock signal a bit, so maybe that, that was it. That doesn't boot now. Uh, let me check. Oh, maybe that's the first one. Oh, no, it's not, it's not the jumper. Okay. Should work. There's no reason why not. still crashing, I don't know why. The machine does seem to run fine, so let's load something else. So maybe the, the file that it loads by default is corrupted. Let me load it, uh, let, let me load it this way. So, so you can see it's a snapshot file, so I think the file is corrupted now. Can see, so I think that's the only problem, but I'm not, I'm not completely sure. Um, so let's just load up uh, R type and see if it works just fine. So there are so many problems today. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Who did this to me? Anyway, let's get out of R type, the best game ever. All right, this is just a the plain version. Uh, oh, it's on the camps now, I think. No, I, I sh just a second. I need to reset it and load uh, load it again because I didn't set the correct joystick type. So, all right. Oh no! Ah. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> oh, wrong button. Wrong button. I said. Um. All right. Okay, I should reset the system now. I think the contacts are not clean completely because I've touched the board a lot of time, of course. I just want to play our time. Give me our time. Uh, did I put it somewhere else as well? Let me check. Uh, did I put it here maybe? No, I don't think so. It is here as well. This, this is TRD. This is the 128K version, remix version, but this works a lot better. Oh, I think we just have, there's some extra added uh, music. Ah, okay, this works. Oh, die! Dang! I should use a joystick. <laughs> That's my excuse. I have a joystick here somewhere, but... Ooh, that was close. <laughs> I don't like gamepads. <laughs> I use gamepads for testing, but I should use a joystick. Joysticks are so much easier. Ooh, close.
Yeah, man. We're doing right. We're doing alright. I like the music. It makes it more exciting. <laughs> If you have never played R-Type, then you're missed out of some a lot of fun. I really like this game. Can I win from the boss? I'm not sure if space is details here. I have to check. Because I need to get that part in here. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, but I... Oh yeah, okay. Oh, I died! <laughs> okay, I'm so stupid. Okay, that was enough for me. So, there's nothing wrong with the board. The board is completely working fine. <sighs> okay, finally. I really needed some more time. <laughs> Alright, so we did it. It's working, finally. Perfect. <sighs> Alright, so there's still hope. <laughs> there's still hope. Um, this was a hell of a job. Uh, there were several problems, I guess, with this board. And maybe I made it uh, worse than, uh, uh, than at first by swapping the regulator out a couple of times. Uh, maybe that got the pad off, maybe it was just with the first insertion of the uh, regulator, I don't know. But it's working now, so uh, I'm smiling. <laughs> and I will get down to the kids now, because it's 9 o'clock here and uh, the kids need some attention. Um, but I like what we did here, and uh, <sighs> finally can uh, test all those parts that are in the, at the back in the, in the blue, uh, in the blue uh, thing there, container. Um, so I think I, I need to test Ten or more d different parts, um, but at least five or six for Harkin. So that's what I need to do, and then I can uh, create more Harkin kits uh, tomorrow with my wife. My wife helps me with with those um, because people are waiting. So thank you all for your patience. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the the best job ever that I did ever, but we made it. We did it, and we sat through it all together. So thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video, hopefully tomorrow, as always. So thank you, and see you tomorrow then.